Now let's talk about um, what I've been doing with my electronics. I probably have unboxed more electronics than anybody has ever when it comes to the combination of stuff I've done. Now, I don't think I've unboxed the most Blu-ray plays ever, because there's, or VCRs, because when you look up VCRs, there's this guy that sells VCRs professionally, and he has hundreds of them on YouTube videos. But I think I'm, when it comes to the person that does homemade videos and aren't for money or anything like that, I think I do, I've done the most videos. But I know for sure that I've done the most movie unboxings than anybody on YouTube. I've never found a channel that's unboxed as many VHS tapes, laser discs, HD DVDs, DVDs, 4K, Blu-rays, you name it. I, I, I don't think anyone even comes close to me because I do individual unboxings. Usually people, when they unbox their movies, they put it, they take them all out of a box and they just show you each one and that's it. I show you each and every mechanical failure in tapes. I show you if, if a tape has mold on it. I show you if a disc has a scratch. I show you everything. There's no other channel that really does that. Then they, they don't go into detail. They just show you the tape and then they put it down. That's it. Now, I told you a long time ago someone complained and it kind of... It kind of uh, it kind of annoyed me because I had showed them enough of the tape to to justify whether you wanted to buy it or not. But they thought I didn't show enough. They complained that I didn't show them all the discs and stuff like that. And um, and they were kind of cocky about it because I responded, "Oh well, um, it's good enough." And you know, some people just you know they're a pain in the ass, and that's why I don't accept any comments anymore because people just get too out of control. And plus, I don't want to hear it. I'm not on here to respond to every comment. I mean, I have over 9,000 videos now. If I was to respond to every comment or whatever, it would get ridiculous. And I can't moderate every comment. Who knows what people might say in comments and what they'll, what they'll leave next to a video. So I can't do that anymore. Um, I do know that I'm, I'm, I'm attracting a lot of people now compared to when I started. Just the other day, I got 40 likes. Uh, I made a video, and now I have 40 likes on it about VHS. That's crazy. I don't think I've ever had a video go that fast. 40 likes in less than a week. And it uh, doesn't have many views, only 600-something views. But 40 likes means they at least watch the video for a short amount of time. That's pretty big for my channel. Um, today I unboxed two um, Blu-ray players. One directly worked with my receiver which was great. The True HD worked and everything. Great surround sound. The other one I had to use digital coaxial to get it to work. Um, wasn't really a big deal, but um, it shows that I told people before, when you, you, when you unbox Blu-ray players, if you, um, your receiver and TV can't accept the sound, the only way to get it is to use a um, what's it called? An optical or digital coaxial cable and go directly into the receiver or a sound bar, some other device that gives off sound that has an optical or, or digital coaxial. There's no other way to do it. A lot of the older players only have digital coaxial. In that case, you're probably going to need a receiver. I don't know of any sound bar that would accept digital coaxial. There might be some external speaker systems or some kind of Bluetooth speaker that would accept it. From, but from what I understand, digital coaxial is an older type of thing. And I don't quite understand why um some 4K players actually had it. When I bought my first 4K player, which was a Sony, it had a digital coaxial in the back. And I don't understand why. Uh, most people had optical at the time. It was so much easier to use an optical cable, but... I have tons of digital co coaxial, optical. I have all the old stuff. Oh, and did I mention that since I'm going to make this an electronics update, I found a really, really old VCR at Goodwill. Um, was it, No, it wasn't Goodwill. It was, it was at Savers. This is a really old one. I'm talking probably in the 80s sometime. It didn't have a digital display. The, um, in order to see, though, it looked like it had digit codes, but it was on these plastic things that went up and down. Like it was a really, um, one of those counter things. Um, I don't know how to describe it for something. It, it, there was nothing digital on the display. It was all mechanical. 
Um, it had a top loader, which meant you had, had to lift the cover up to put the VHS in. I knew if I bought it, it was over a 95% chance it, it would not work because all these years. I was thinking about going back just to buy it as a dis display piece to put it in the house. It's nostalgic. I might go back and get it if it's still there. I have no clue. But that w that looked pretty cool, and I thought it was um a pretty nice piece of technology. Um, what else do I have to say? Um, you know, I'm the vintage person now, pretty much. You notice I don't really unbox many 4K movies anymore. I feel like I can get a lot more movies for the cheaper, obviously, with um, DVDs and... VHS and laser discs, which you can. I just, you know, I don't like the newest stuff. So when a new movie comes out, I'm not going to buy every 4K movie. And they've redone, remastered a lot of 4K movies from older movies and stuff. They're like, they did the Kindergarten Cop. I'm sorry, but I already have the Kindergarten Cop on Blu-ray. I might have it on VHS somewhere. Why in the hell would I want to buy that all over again in 4K? Like, why would someone waste their money doing that? That doesn't make any sense to me. What kind of possible upgrade could you see in a movie? Believe it or not, sometimes they look better, but sometimes they don't. A lot of older movies, I don't understand why they don't look good as, as, as other... How do I... Let me say that again. There's a lot of older movies that look great in 4K... And then some of them look like shit, and they're made in the same time frame, and you're wondering why does one look better than another? It all depends what cameras they were filmed on, how much effort the studios want to put into them. Usually these third-party studios do a great job on, um, what's it called, like Arrow and stuff like that, and Shout, or um, Shout Factory, whatever. But you have to pay a lot more money for their work compared to a regular studio release. Um, there's a lot of um, remade movies, remastered movies for 4K you can buy for 20 25 bucks. But if Shout or Arrow was to make them, then you're talking over $30 most of the time. A lot of the um, Arrow movies can be $40 or more for 4K, and that's ridiculous. I mean, people can buy them all they want, but I'm not going to pay $50 for a, a movie that was made how many years ago. I can understand the horror movies because those are classics and people go crazy for them. But for an average film to pay 40 or 50 bucks, that's ridiculous. Okay, what else can I say? Um, that's about it. <laughs> that's definitely about it. Um... I didn't see anything else. I bought that television today that was 15 inches, but it works. I looked it up. Um, Amazon usually has everything you look up when it comes to electronics. They're not selling it anymore, but they have a page with all the reviews and pictures of the product. Um, I bought a 15-inch shop television. It has S-Video and Component and Composite in the back. The sound was really bad on it. I turned it up all the way and I could barely hear it. Come to find it out, that's what it was like back in the day. Because I read a review and they said they could barely hear the sound. It was horrible. And I guess when TVs are really small, the sound are really bad. But I've had a lot of small TVs. They don't sound well, but they get pretty loud. This one, it was like having most TVs on a volume of 5 or 10 compared to 100%. That's a lot. Um, what else do I have to say? That's about it. I'm a huge collector. So a lot of DVDs and VHS lately. I have some 4Ks. Um, I pre-ordered that Columbo, but that's going to be a while for that to show you what that looks like. Um, I pre-ordered the Halo 2 season. I don't know what's going to happen with that. It says it's going to show up in December, but it comes out July 23rd, I think it is, or something like that. So maybe, you know, Amazon likes to change all the delivery dates around all the time. So... It might look like it's coming in six months and it comes the next week. I hate that. I wish it would just give you an accurate assessment or, or, or what you're up against so you know. I also don't like Amazon because they just charge you the moment of shipping. Suppose you accidentally buy something and don't refuel the account. It, it could get declined. All kind of crazy things could happen. I don't know what happens if you do a big pre-order on Amazon and it gets declined. I don't know what they do for you. Um, would they just surrender your um, product and give it to somebody else? The next person in line for the pre-order? I would assume that. They're not going to wait forever for you to pay for it. 
So that's big pain in the ass. Well, that's it. I can't remember the other videos I was going to make today, but bye-bye.